What is going on everybody? In this video I will talk about updates on the shield in God of War Ragnarok NG Plus and how it all changes my perspective. This video is based on the original one I have released before NG Plus dropped, so if you haven't seen it yet I would recommend pausing this one, watching the old one and then coming back. Link in the description. First of all we got a new shield. Spartan Aspis. Description says it's a variation of Guardian Shield with smaller parry windows and stronger special counters. And to be honest, the deal doesn't seem so sweet from the first glance. Adapting to way smaller timings and suffering from often broken blocks doesn't seem like worth extra damage. But there is more to it. While on bosses extra damage will be the only difference, on every other enemy's counters will have extra effect. Light counter now will send enemies far away allowing for some space, and keep in mind it can even send elite enemies like captains or wolvers, like here my counter jet through wolver off the ledge, it is very powerful, though you should think about it twice because you will have to run towards the enemy if you were focusing it. And this is where heavy counters come in handy. Heavy counter now launches all enemies around into the air, so if you want to keep attacking enemies in front of you, this is the counter to go. With blaze equipped, you can air juggle the entire packs of enemies with simply mushing R1. This counter is absolutely insane. So yeah, it's not a simply scaling change, it is actually the gameplay game style change. But is it worth parry timings? Well, this is the question you have to answer for yourself, because some people will have an easier time adapting to new timings than the others. Even though I struggled a bit with adapting, and every time I came back to Aspis from any other shield I have to adapt again, I think it is very worth it on regular encounters. Bosses, on the other hand, is a different story. Benefits will be reduced to the plane damage, so there is no game style differences from Guardian Shield. And while damage is really solid, I personally couldn't make parries consistent enough. As I said, it really depends on how good are you with parry timings, if you can adapt to Aspis timings well enough so you parry at least 9 out of 10 attacks, this is more than welcome substitute for Guardian Shield. My consistency was uh, around 7 out of 10 and I don't think it's good enough to justify it in boss fights. But the new shield is not the only change. YouTube was absolutely buzzing with it and yeah, Shatterstar shield now is capable of parrying red ring attacks. Not all of them, but most of them. Like you still won't be able to parry Gna for Asgard attack, but as a general rule, what looks like it can be parried, can be parried. It can't be done with regular parry of course, but only with a unique Shatterstar shield mechanic where you parry with timed shield strike. By the way, game actually registers it as parry, and uh, yeah, uh, anything that triggers on parry uh, also triggers on this shield strike counters. Parrying and blockable attacks not going to be easy, you will have to learn the timings of the new attacks, and of course screwing it up will immediately result in taking a lot of damage. However, it deals really significant damage, I think uh, it's quite worth it. Uh, and another case where I find it very very helpful is when you use Lunda's chest or engraving. In this case, extra shield strike will help to stack poison on the enemy. Changes in shields themselves are not the only changes that affect their value. It is also about enemy move changes, balance changes, all that stuff that NG Plus brings with it. Let's start from the two flagman bosses of the game, Gna and Hrolf. Those are the ultimate challenges of the game, so I could not ignore usability of the shields in those two fights. Gna Blue Ring attack now cover a much bigger area, so you may end up in a situation where you have to cover a longer distance to interrupt it. Hrolf attacks now pre proceeds with blockable wave that pushes you away a little bit when you block. On top of that, on Give Me Get Award difficulty, um, Hrolf turns on Runic Shield during this attack. It means the tricks like interrupting it with Dothar not gonna work anymore. 
With this change Onslaught Shield or Shatterstar Shield will give you a bit of an edge. Onslaught Shield will quickly get you to the boss and then drop the attack without a hustle. Shatterstar Shield Strike has fairly high range and a couple of steps towards Hurl while you're waiting for Wave. Not going to hurt either. The last thing I wanted to talk about is stat balance changes. You see, with NG Plus, build approach significantly changed. Now, instead of maximizing build effectiveness through most valuable stats, you have one main stat that scales your build, and everything else you are just trying to get to the level where you can enable all required engravings. So, obviously, engravings and requirements will have some say in the applicability of the shields and their secondary stats. I will get into a bit more details as I will be going through my updated rankings. Speaking of which, it's time I start assigning numbers to the shields based on advanced signs I just pulled out of my ass. But before that, I want to reiterate again, all shields are really fun, I tried all of them and I still recommend everyone to try all of them at some point. Sixth place goes to the Stonewall shield. While it was an interesting first playthrough, we are talking NG Plus here. I don't care about going through the game anymore, I care about feeling powerful, effective, stylish, and Stonewall ability to block yellow attacks definitely does not contribute to it. Yeah, launching enemies into the air with a charged shield slam is nice, but there are so many other options to do that, it is not unique enough. On top of that, the secondary stat is Vitality, and unless you're playing Vitality build, you probably want your stats somewhere else, because all the good engravings require other stats. Fifth place I'm giving to the Guardian Shield. Okay, it's a drop from my winner to fifth, I think I have to explain myself here and be very clear on it. Nothing of what made this shield number one is gone, it is still an amazing shield against the bosses due to its ability to interrupt their attacks and will make your life much easier. What changes is the context. First of all, not having a secondary stat is now a massive downside in the NG Plus build approach, because less stats means less perks, which means it is much harder to create the build. Second of all, while counters are definitely not as bland and boring as blocking with Stonewall, they are nowhere near as fun and engaging as new counters from Spartan Shield. Uh, last criticism is very specific to my experience, but I think it is still worth mentioning. I played this game with different shields so many times, so I don't really feel so much difference between interrupting attack chain with Guardian or continuing blocking, evading, parrying. When you just want to clean the game, it is one thing, but if you are playing NG+, odds are you are looking for something more than the easiest way to get rid of the enemy. And Onslaught Shield takes 4th place. There is not much going on here, charge was fun, it's still fun, you still can launch enemies and start the combo if you char charge far enough, but apart from that there not much going on there. There are two main reasons why this shield stays higher than Guardian. First, as I mentioned, with new blue ring attacks of Hrolf and Gna, it gives you a bit of a peace of mind. And the second reason is the lack stat. Lunda's engraving is one of the best in the game, especially when we talk about boss fights. With new attack patterns, it is super easy to apply poison just by blocking and parrying. And we all know how strong poison is. Problem, this engraving requires whooping 400 luck, which is not easy to break, and in many builds the only way to get there is Onslaught Shield. And the bronze medal goes to Spartan Shield. It suffers the same problem as Guardian Shield in terms of stats, but the counters are absolutely worth both stats problem and parry timing changes. They are strong and stylish, significantly refreshing the gameplay. If you like Guardian Shield, this one is much better. Of course, in the end, it will go down to how good are you with new timings. If you're not sure if you want to dedicate a lot of time to adapt to it, I would say give it 10 ish combat encounters with regular enemies and you will get a sense if this is your thing or not, really. And second place goes to Shutterstar Shield. 
I was thinking of giving it first, but then I was like, nah, I'm still not very natural with it, and it's my ranking, so no first place. Uh, but it's still a massive race from last place, so let's call out good stuff. It's secondary status runic, which helps to enable absolutely amazing manis engraving that can fit literally any build. Its unique mechanic now can parry and blockables, that is really fun. It also helps to stack poison from Lunda's perk, which is more accessible now. Uh, long shield strike range and ability to move fast with shield up help to counter two very scary giant wolf attacks. Add on top of that all cancelling stuff and you get the shield that provides probably the most depth of the combat in the game. I had a lot of fun with it, however, I am still absolutely not natural with it and I still suck at cancelling. Big time. Because all of that, first place goes to runner-up of previous ranking, Dauntless Shield. Perfect parries on Dauntless Shield are very satisfying and exciting, but mistimings are not as unforgiving as on Spartan Shield, so you can feel much cooler. And sound, my god, those sounds are so satisfying. All the previous advantages still stand, and cooldown stat is very very useful. It can help you to get Berserker engraving to work with 170 cooldown requirement, or if you want to push it further, you can get to spiritual engraving. Both of those are extremely powerful engravings. So yeah, this is my updated ranking of the shields. Let me know what your favorite shield is in the comments. Lately the YouTube algorithm is not treating my videos nicely for whatever reason, so like, comment, subscribe, all the stuff, any type of interaction will help. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.